Welcome back. So today what we're going to be talking about the database necessary in order to provide the same functionality that Instagram does by allowing its users to follow other users and see their photos. So currently what we have is a user table. The user table is storing things like their user ID, their user name, the user's profile photo and email. Um, we also want to start storing our photos. So I take a photo, I want to store it into some type of database in order for anyone who's following me to view it. We'll create a photo table with some user ID of the person whose photo it belongs to, a photo ID, as well as maybe a time date stamp in order to render these in a chronological order, as well as the URL. Now, if I want to get or see photos that you've posted in the current, with the current two tables, that's not really possible. I can either see everything everyone's followed or nothing, I guess. So what we'll need to do in this case is we'll have to create another table. I'm gonna call this a following table. So here, as you see, I have multiple instances of me. So here I have me following you, me following her, and me following him. So with this information, what I can do is do a select join on, the, on these user IDs and find these users' photos. So what would that select statement look like? It'll look something like this. Now that's great. So we figure out a way to show what our users have posted in our feed because we'll just do that inner join, get these photos and plop it into the view and we'll be good to go. Now, not so much so. Let's take a look back at Instagram. Instagram also has a thing called comments. So a user can have comments on their photos. They can have multiple comments on their photos and we need to go ahead and have some way to store those. So that's going to require another table. So within this comments table, we would have an ID of who the photo belongs to, who makes the comment, what the comment was, the photo ID, where the comment was stored, maybe a time date stamp in order to have them in some type of order, and a couple other things that we're not gonna worry about right now, but we have to store that somewhere so we have another table. So we have our four tables. We have one that we know we're gonna have to do a three table join on, and now we know that once we do get our URLs or our photo IDs, we can go into our comment table and get all of our comments in order to display those as well. Now, that would be great, but of course, Instagram has another feature, which is a liking photos. Now, if it was just a simple matter of counting how many photos someone liked, then we're good to go. Now, because that's not the case, we, we want to do is we want to store, because we want to know who liked the photo and of course that has gotten a lot of people in a lot of trouble but we're going to go ahead and, and implement this in our app so we want to store not only that someone liked our photo but we want to know who liked our photo and if we wanted to display the last person who liked it maybe or display it could be it can get really complicated so let's just keep it pretty simple so that's a lot of joins. So we already have, like I said, have this three table join. And then once we get that result, we'll do another three table join in order to finish that post. Now, that's great if you're doing a database and you could probably think of a way to uh, set it up so that way you won't do that many joins. But if I was to, at the top of my head, think of a way to do it, that's the way I'd probably do it. Now, the problem is with this is that we're not actually using an actual SQL database. So what we need to do is we need to think of, in terms of a NoSQL database. Now, 
one of the things that I will share with you is that while Firebase allows you to do joins, your code could grow rather large and unmanageable. Hope you guys uh, check out my next video where we'll be talking about the NoSQL Fire database and how we're going to translate a SQL database into that. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.